Good evening. So finally, we are on the last step of this uh, module. So this is the last day. We are going to end the course today. And it was um, a really good time because we learned a lot of things. We make some reviews. And we remember uh, information maybe we forget through the process. But in this case, we were like um, learning more about the topics that we uh, develop uh, in other courses. And we're going to continue learning more things. Um, so this is the end. And we're going to uh, complete the information that we have for this course because we're going to end uh, today. And we're going to continue talking about future. And you know that it is very, um, it is related to their reality because uh, we are going to talk about actions that we are going to perform in the future. So in this case, we are like making predictions about the things that you're going to do in the future. Uh, you know that this is not the end of the process. You need to continue. Uh, good evening with the um, the learning process because you need to learn more and you need to practice more and you are going to become a good speaker of the language. So in this case, it's not the end. You can uh, continue gaining information, gaining experience and all of the things that you need to have for your future. So in this case, we are going to continue with the topic because in this case, we were talking about future, uh, but it's just the beginning of the topic. So now we are going to continue with that and we are going to end the topic, um, seeing all the elements that we have for the future. And then we're going to end the work on the platform because you know that in this case, um, this is the last day that you have to complete all of the exercises that you have on the platform. So we are going to work a little bit on the platform and we are going to complete the information that we have for today. Um, in this case, the first thing that we're going to say is that yesterday we were talking about uh, the future. I'm not sharing the screen uh, right now, but I'm going to do it in a couple of minutes. So. In that case, we were talking about future and we were saying that uh, we have different ways to talk about the future, um, but we need to express, in this case, we need to know that uh, it is not just expressing uh, some ideas, some action or some events. In this case, um, when we are talking about future, we are going to talk about also uh, the attitude that we have about the future. It is a positive attitude or it is a negative attitude that we have through the future. So yesterday we were talking about also the different expresses that can we, um, I mean, the, the different ideas that can we express using a different tenses, but they are related to the future. And in that case, it's like using different tenses to express a future idea or a future action. And we have this list. This is the list that we were like working yesterday. And we are going to end that list because we have uh, some examples more. And we have here that we have simple prediction, arrangements, plans and intentions, a timetable events, prediction based on the present on present evidence, willingness and action in progress in the future, an action or event that is a matter of routine, obligation and action or event that will take place immediately or very soon. And the last one, projecting ourselves into the future and looking back at complete action. 
And we have some examples using different tenses, um, but that we are um, talking about a future action or a future situation. And in that case, we have a couple of um, sentences more that we're going to continue. So in this case, we're going to end with this part and we're going to see the structure that we have for the future. So the next one is um, an obligation. And in this case is you are to travel directly to London. Then for an action or event that will take place immediately or very soon, the train is about to leave. The train is about to leave. And the last one is projecting ourselves into the future and looking back at a complete action. And we have the example, a month, a month from now, he will have finished all his exams. Uh -huh. So in that case, we have all the examples uh, that we can use um, uh, to express the future. Para esta parte, es solo una, um, como un feedback. Uh, estamos utilizando el futuro, pero recuerden que para el futuro también podemos utilizar diferentes eh, tiempos, diferentes estructuras, diferentes tenses. Y aquí se ve reflejado en los ejemplos. Eh, tenemos una lista de cosas que podemos eh, nosotros expresar en el futuro a través de este tipo de oraciones. Eh, tenemos la primera, que es como la más básica. There will be snow in many areas tomorrow. Eh, that in that case, we are using will that is eh, telling us that we are talking about the future. The second one, I'm meeting Jim at the airport that also um, the Jevron uh, in some cases is telling us to um, that we are talking about the future. In the case of going to, you know that they are talking about future because that is an, a specific structure of the future. But then you have like, the train is about to leave. In that case, you're not using a future structure. In that case, you are telling something that is an event that will take place immediately or very soon. So in that case, it's something that is going to happen but it is not necessary that you use the future structure because in that case, um, you are leaving that situation in the present and it's going to happen in a couple of minutes, in an hour or something like that. So in those cases, we have like different tenses that we can use to express the future. So now we're going to see the uh, number one, that is the simple future form. So the simple future is composed of two parts, will or shall plus infinity without to. In this case, when we're talking about will and shall, remember that shall is like more formal 
a more formal way of using the future, but also it is just like um, we are going to use shall with I and we, not with all of the subjects that we have in English. In that case, it's like, um, it's better to use with I and also with we, but not with you, he, she, and it, and all of the uh, pronouns. In that case, it's just for a specific uh, uses and also it's more formal than will. And we have the example following the structure. In this case, the structure for this statement is subject plus will plus infinity without two. And we have the example, he will Leave. Again, in this case, when you are using the auxiliaries, remember that you are not going to change uh, the form of the verb. In this case, you are using will, and uh, that is not necessary that you change the form of the infinity because in that case, you are like affecting um, the statement with the auxiliary. Now we are going to see the example for affirmative, negative, interrogative, negative, and also we are going to see the contractions. So here we have the uh, examples um, using the structure. In that case, you, you have the basic structure in which you have the subject, will, and the infinitive. And uh, following that structure, you can uh, create your negative statements and also your questions, because in that case, you know that you, has, you are just going to uh, move the words and change the order a little bit to create questions. And in the case of the negative interrogative or the negative questions, you know that you are just going to use will not, then you're going to use the subject and at the end, the infinitive. But in this case, you are using want, that is the um, contraction of the negative form. And we have the negative form, uh, the two different negative forms, will not and want. So in that case, you can use whatever you want in that case, because they are the same thing. They have the same meaning, just is a change of the way you are uh, writing the negative. So in that case, you can use want or you can use will not. And we are going to see the contractions.
I will, it's going to be, I'll, you will, to, he, she will, And in this case, it also. Kill. Shield. Eat. But in this case, it's some kind of weird. We will. Will. And they, because we are not going to write again you. They will. So in this case, when we have this one, I'm going to mark this because I need to like say something about this form. I'm going to mark in, in orange. When we have it will, uh, normally we don't uh, write this form. So it is not very common to use uh, the contraction or of it will. So I am not saying that it is impossible or it is um, something wrong to write the it will in this way, but it is not very common to do it. So in that case, I am just adding the E because in that case, it sounds kind of uh, difficult to pronounce uh, because it's kind of hard. And also it is not like very common to write this form. So in this case, I'm going to write the specification of this contraction. So in that case, uh, it's better not to shorten the form, just write it will. And we are going to see some examples. I shan't see. That is the negative form of shall. Shan't see. I won't see, I will not see, and I shan't see. So in that case, it's just when you are using uh, I and we, that you are going to use shall. And it is the same meaning of will. So in that case, it's uh, almost the same, just is. In this case, shall is more formal than will, but they have the same meaning.
Así que como recordatorio, ¿verdad? El shall eh, tiene el mismo significado que will, solo que se utiliza con el pronombre yo y el pronombre nosotros. No es muy común utilizarlo con otros pronombres, o en este caso es directamente con el I en we, y eh, no es como que vaya a cambiar mucho el significado que le damos a la frase, sino que simplemente es más formal que el otro. So, what is the function of the future simple or simple future? The simple future refers to a time later than now and express facts or certainty. In this case, there is no attitude. When we are using the simple uh, future, we are not talking about attitude. In this case, we are talking about um, actions that are going to happen in a future, in a, a time later than now and express facts or certainty, but they are not like Talking about our attitude through the future. So what are the uses of the simple future? We are going to see the different uses that we can give to this structure. We have nine uses for this structure. So we're going to begin with the number one and it says to predict a future event. To predict a future event. For example, it will rain tomorrow. Number two, with I and we, to express a spontaneous decision. I will pay for the tickets for credit card. Number three, to express willingness and we have the example, I will do the washing up and he will carry your bags for you. Number four, in the negative form to express unwillingness. So in this case, we were talking about willingness, but now we can also uh, talk about unwillingness. So in that case, in the first one, we are like in 
in the mood to help someone, but in the second one, we are not feeling that way and we don't want um, to help someone to do something. We have the example, the baby won't eat I mean, I'm going to write it with this. The baby won't eat his soap. I won't leave until I have seen the manager. Number five, with I in the interrogative form to make an offer. And we have the example, shall I open the window? Next one, with we in the interrogative form to make a suggestion. And we have the example, shall we go to the cinema tonight? Shall we go to the cinema tonight? Next one, and we are almost done with I in the interrogative form to ask for advice or instructions. And we have the example. What shall I tell the boss about this money? What shall I tell the boss about this money? Next one, with you. with you to give orders. You will do exactly as I say. This one with you. But in this case is to give an invitation. So 
So we have two different uh, uses with you, but in the first one is to give orders, and in the second one is to give an invitation. Will you come to dance? Will you come to the dance with me? And the other one, will you marry me? So those are the uses that we can give to the simple future. So in this case, in modern English, um, will is preferred uh, to show. So in this case, it's like, um, if we feel good using will, we are going to use will for all of the subject, but in some cases, if you want to use tall, it's okay too. It said that shall is mainly used with I and we to make an offer or suggestion or to ask for advice. With the other person, you, he, she, they, shall is, not, is only used in literally or poetic situations. So in that case, when we are using I and we, we can use shall, but uh, with the other a uh, person uh, or the other like uh, pronouns is only used in a poetic situation. So when you are writing and all of that things, you can use shall, but not when you are talking. Then we have the other uh, structure and in this case is number two. Future continuous form. Future continuous form. This one said that the future continuous is made up of two elements. The simple future of the verb to be plus the present participle base plus ing. So here we have the structure and we have subject plus simple future to be plus base plus ing. And in the example we have you will be watching. You will be watching. So now we're going to see some examples of the affirmative, negative, interrogative, and interrogative negative. For the affirmative we have, I will be asking for the negative, she won't be leaving. Interrogative. Will they be retiring?
And for the interrogative negative. Won't we be staying? Won't we stay? Some examples. In this case, we have to stay. Future continues. For the affirmative, I will be staying. Negative. I won't be staying. And the last one. Will I be staying? What are the functions of the uh, future continuous? In this case, we have four different uh, functions uh, in this uh, structure or this tense. So we are going to see. The feature continues refers to an unfinished. In this case, we're talking about unfinished action or event that will be in progress at a time later than now. And it is used in number one, to project ourselves into the future and see something happening. So in this case, we are talking about unfinished actions that are going to continue on the future. So in this case, we're going to use it for uh, projecting ourselves into the future and see something happening. And we're going to see the example. This time next week, I will be sunbathing in Bali. Number two, to refer to action or events that will happen in the normal course of events. And we have the example, I will be seeing Jim at the conference next week.
Number three, in the interrogative form, especially with you, to distinguish between a simple request uh, for information in an invitation. So in that case, we are talking about like um, making the difference between a request for information in an invitation. So we have an example. Will you be coming to the party tonight? Will you be coming to the party tonight? And in these cases, are requesting for information because we are asking a um, confirmation if the uh, person is going to go to the party. So in that case, it's a um, request for information. And we have the other example that it says, will you come to the party? Will you come to the party? And this one is an invitation. And number four, to predict or guess about someone's actions or feelings now or in the future. And we have the example. You will be feeling tired. After that long walk, I expect. After that long walk, I expect. And we are almost done with the information uh, because um, we are going to see the future perfect and the future perfect continues and they are very short because we have a uh, short information about them. And we are like going to end the session with uh, that information because we are going to uh, talk about all of these um, chances. So we are going to talk about the next one. That is future perfect and it is very, very short. So we are going to end uh, very quick. So number three, future perfect. And uh, it says that the future perfect is composed of two elements the simple future of the bird to have, in this case, we are going to use to have, and the past participle of the main bird.
And we are going to uh, see the structure. We have subject plus we'll have plus past participle. And we have the example. He will have finish. Affirmative. I will have left. I will have left. Negative. They won't have gone. They won't have gone. Interrogative. Where we have seen in the last example, interrogative negative. When he have arrived, when he have arrived, so we have the function. And this one said that the future perfect refers to a complete action in the future. When we use this tense, we are projecting ourselves forward into the future and looking back at the action that will be completed sometime later than now. It is often used with a time expression using by plus a point in the future time. So in this case, we are talking about a complete actions in the future. And they are not just like a prediction or something like that because we are projecting ourselves into that situation. And also we are going to use this structure with by plus a point in future time. So in that case, we are projecting ourselves into the future. So we have some examples and it says, I will have been here for six months on John 23rd.
By the time you read this, I will have left. And that is all the information that we um, have here uh, about the future perfect. Now we are going to see the last one that is the future perfect continuous. That is number four. This form is composed of two elements, the future perfect of verb to be, that is will have been, plus the present participle of the main verb, that is the base of the verb plus ing. The structure subject plus will have will have been plus base ing. We this is the example. We will have been. Living. Then we have the affirmative. I will have been working. Negative. I won't have been working. Interrogative. Will I have been working? And the last one, interrogative negative. Won't I have been working? Want I have been working and the last thing that we're going to see here is the function of this one. Like the future perfect simple, this form is used to project ourselves forward in time and to look back. It refers to events or action in a time between now and some future time that may be unfinished.
And the last thing are the exam. And we have, I will have been waiting here for three hours by six o'clock. I will be, I will have been waiting for three hours by six o'clock. Okay, here we have the information about the future. And you know that um, uh, you have in the future the going to, but in this case, we don't have more time to talk about the going to because it's time to end the session. And you know that this one is the last session of the course. So we are going to say goodbye. I wish you a lot of good things in your life. And keep going, you need to find and you need to continue learning more and new things and you are doing very well. So I just want to say thank you for your time uh, because it's very uh, precious for all of us. And uh, you are doing a great job learning English. So thank you for your time and we are going to end this session. Um, you're welcome and thanks to you for your time and your patience. So we are going to end the session and I wish you uh, very good uh, things in the future. So we are going to stop this one and this is the last session. So thank you for your time and have a really good night. Thank you, teacher. Thank you, thank you teacher. teacher. You're welcome. Thank you. Bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye teacher. Bye bye.